growing your art business through Pinterest. And don't we all want that? We want growth. We want to see uh, our art getting out there, our art getting sold, connecting with potential art buyers. And uh, so glad we're living in this time of social media with all its ups and downs. Um, but there are really opportunities out there. And uh, today we're going to be highlighting uh, the wonderful platform of Pinterest. And I'm really curious for the people that are here. Um, please let me know if you are using Pinterest. So just give me a yes or give me a no. And maybe you're curious about uh, you know, what Pinterest is and what it can mean for uh, your art business. Uh, then you're in the right place because hopefully you'll be able to ask um, answer those questions and we can help each other if you act on Pinterest you can also share your insights very very welcome to do that because this is a community we're doing this together we're helping one another that's also why it's called help I'm artist Facebook community Sissa's here from Copenhagen great glad you could make it Sissa always wonderful to see you in the community thank you for sharing your URLs yes feel, please feel free to Share your information where we can all find one another. Let me know in the comments whether you are using Pinterest. So give me a yes or give me a no. And then I know what, <laughs> who's in the house. And uh, you can possibly share your experiences later on during the session because um, it's a very specific strategy using Pinterest. It's different than all the other social media platforms, um, but really has wonderful perks for artists. So let me know in the comments if you are using Pinterest or not. And if you're just joining in, very, very welcome. Um, please share your details and uh, where we can find you and what kind of art you're making. So this is no, not using Pinterest for my art. Are you using Pinterest for your own, uh, um, just privately, sister, searching and uh, making boards for inspiration? Um, but maybe not for your art. Is that, do I understand you correctly? And Jan says, I'm using Pinterest, but only for personal purposes, gathering inspiration, art cooking, and then track and field. Yeah, I think that's for most of us, is that we use it privately, have private accounts, and uh, use it for as a source of inspiration and to gather information. That really is how Pinterest works. And if you know that, then you can use that to your advantage. Um, yeah, as it says, Pinterest has lots of inspiration because it's so visual and uh, exciting to look at and uh, very curated. Hi, Elizabeth. Good to have you here from uh, Cape Town, South Africa. Always lovely to have you here. Uh, uh, Elizabeth says, no, I have an account, but I don't know how to use it. Well, hopefully I'm going to give you a little bit of insight, uh, Elizabeth, of uh, what it could mean for your art business. So let's get started um, with the session. Uh, just for the new people uh, joining live or watching the replay, my name is Sonia Small here. Uh, I'm an art coach. I'm passionate about uh, everything art, creative, creativity, um, love drawing, love painting, um, and love helping artists. Art is important, and that's why I've created content like this, so this uh, Facebook community and uh, to share with artists, to help artists, to inspire, and to show what's possible, especially in this day and age. Because art is important, art needs to get out there. Creativity is important as a voice, as a message, as, a, uh, as just what we have hanging around um, at this moment in the process of immigrating. So we are um, I'm in a very empty house, so we took all our paintings down. Our walls are white, and it's like the soul has been taken out of our house. All that character and atmosphere. So art adds so much personality to a home, to uh, your life. It can, can mean so much. So it's so important that you can not only make your art, but it can get out there to your art audience. And I love helping artists do that through my podcasts through sessions like this, through my courses, through um, just connecting with artists one-on-one, -on -one, through coaching sessions. Um, I have an online course that uh, goes live every year in March. So uh, every year we have 12 weeks together with artists from all over the world. It's really a wonderful time of learning, really going deep. It's a whole framework of how you can build a business around your creativity. 
So you're not uh, having to do all kinds of odd jobs, but really set up some kind of structure, diversify your, your uh, giftings and your revenue streams. So if you want to know more about that, please join the waitlist and you can stay informed about uh, when the next uh, course starts. And you are here in the community, whether you're watching the replay on other channels or you're here in the Facebook community, because, uh, you know, it's so important to be able to do this together. We are, you know, better together and uh, we really can learn from one another. So uh, great that you guys uh, are here and also for you watching the replay in the community. Very, very welcome and uh, please feel free to join in. So this is our third session in our series of getting more out of your social media, getting the most out of your social media. And we're looking at uh, using Pinterest to grow your art business. As uh, I've mentioned in previous sessions, social media is just starting. It's just in the you know beginning phases. Uh, people all over the world, there are billions of users on the various platforms. So there are endless possibilities. You just need to know how and you need to use it very intentionally so it's not using you and your, all your time so that you can't make your art but that you can actually use it very strategically. A graphic just to show you how the different platforms are, are performing in 2021. We see uh, Facebook of course as the big and the largest social media channel and uh, Pinterest is there just um, above Snapchat and uh, but ahead of Twitter. So it is growing exponentially. You really, we've seen growth in 2020. Um, Pinterest has never grown as much. It had more than um, a million new uh, uh, users um, on the platform because I think everyone was looking for inspiration. With the lockdown, not being able to travel, we went to visual uh, places and uh, Pinterest was the go-to place to get that inspiration. And uh, that makes it exciting because it is a curated place with a lot of, uh, you know, inspiration, as Sissa was saying. And Jan, you go there for inspiration, for tips, for how-tos. And uh, as I said, has grown with more than a million um, users in 2020. And I speak to a lot of creatives and I say, well, I've always, you know, been active on Facebook. Then I went to Instagram, which started a few years ago. And I didn't really pay attention to Pinterest. But you see... Just through these last three months, people are getting more aware, like, oh, there's that platform out there. It's uh, less cluttered. It's more curated. And uh, it, it really is definitely um, something for you to consider to use for your art business. Um, it has a very positive vibe where Facebook has had got a bad, you know, not always have a good rap with their privacy policies and uh, a lot of uh, sort of spammy kind of information. Um, Pinterest has stayed very positive, so the brand image and the experience the user has of, of Pinterest is very positive. And of course, that's just such a one-up, you know, if you're wanting to build your brand, connect with an art audience, you know, share your art, being in a positive space really helps. And then what we've seen with the growth of uh, Pinterest, that it used to be a very US-based platform, so many, many users in the United States but in 2020, we saw exponential growth in especially Northern European countries. So Germany grew, Greece grew, the Netherlands grew. So if you are in the Northern Hemisphere or in the uh, Western European uh, nations, even you know, if you're in South Africa, Australia, we've seen growth. So it's not just US clients now, but it's actually growing to different non-English speaking uh, nations, which is a great perk you know, if that's where you are, where you are living. Um, so outside of the Netherlands, uh, outside of the US, really seeing growth, and we've seen the demographic shift where it used to be a platform just for you know the girls, <laughs> for the ladies, so it was the recipes and the lifestyle and the fashion. But they've seen, um, if you look at the graph, the uh, analytics of Pinterest, great growth that the men are now finding Pinterest, and that's not just a girl platform or where the women hang out. But also the men, like Jan was saying, you know, with track, with his, uh, he's uh, active in track, uh, finding information there that it's something that's a given now that you can go and use Pinterest. And it's interesting to know that uh, nearly 82% of the users are using their mobile. So it's something that people are scrolling, you know, on the go, on the fly, or sitting on the couch, they're using their mobiles. So good to know also for your content to have it mobile friendly. 
An interesting shift too with Pinterest is now you're seeing a lot more video placed on Pinterest. If you look at the whole Pinterest feed, it's those videos that are getting the attention. That's what's the eye catches. So it's something for you to consider. You know, if you're making video content of a behind the scenes or a process, also to consider that the Pinterest, um, the orientation, so the orientation is vertical, uh, whereas uh, Facebook is more horizontal. Also, you know, like an Instagram story, consider using and putting video content on your Pinterest uh, account, on your um, boards and on your um, pins, which I will explain a little bit for the new users. Um, so that video is something that is really growing. I mean, the more than 1 billion videos are consumed every single day. That's a huge amount of uh, footage and content. Um, and they are very many unbranded searches and what that means for us you know the consumer is that people aren't just going for brands so that they know maybe an artist or they know a certain you know kind of uh, brand that they've been following they're very open to switch brands or switch you know to be open for new things and that's very interesting because you actually get a chance that you can showcase your work and actually be appreciated and uh, build your brand in such a way. So there's opportunities for uh, for smaller brands too. And there have been studies that people, it's the go-to social media platform when you're planning a new project. So maybe you're moving to a new home and you want to find art for the wall, or you're wanting to plan your interior design, or you, you, know, you are planning your wedding or a party or a festival or a feast, or you're planning something, a new project, they go to Pinterest to plan. So that's something for you to bear in mind as an artist. What can you offer people that are moving into new homes? How can you speak to their need? You know, they want to decorate. What are they going to be hanging on their wall? Or maybe you are more on the product side of things. You know, how can you appeal to that fashion side? Or maybe you have accessories in your collection, uh, prints, reproductions. Um, so, or, you know, I, I shared an example later of someone that does um, lovely watercolors for events, for, especially for weddings. That could be, you know, people are looking for how they're going to organize their wedding. And it's something that you can um, offer a product, a service for them. Pinterest is the place that people will be going to find information. The three categories that are most dominant in uh, 2020 and now 2021 especially, I mean, fashion, it's been around forever, beauty, lifestyle, and, uh, you know, health and fitness. But the dream lifestyle has really grown in 2020, because I think with the lockdown, again, you know, people are thinking of, you know, what does my dream lifestyle look like? And, you know, you are an artist, you have a lifestyle, you have uh, a world around you, you have that inspiration around you, how can you package that and put that into uh, content so that as people are looking for dream lifestyles or something that you can offer them, you know, an experience with your art, with your reproductions, with products uh, or a workshop that corresponds with their dream lifestyle. So it's just good for you to know, interesting to see the trends within um, the social media of uh, Pinterest. And especially for visual artists, because it's a visual platform. It's visual based, so the imagery is super important. I mean, if you look at the feed of Pinterest, no text, well, hardly, there's a, you know, part of the title is there, but the rest is all visual. It's all color, it's all video. So it's all, it's ideal for, for art, for artists, if you want to share information. So that definitely has potential um, and it's free just like the Facebook and Instagram it's a free platform so if you know you've limited in your marketing budget then it's definitely something for you to consider um, but for you good to know it's free for a reason because it is a platform and they are growing they were a little bit behind on the whole ad side of things but they are growing with the sponsored and uh, ad uh, content where you can rank then higher in the feed of uh, the Pinterest uh, because you're paying with attention. So once again, just like uh, Facebook and Instagram, they reward your content. So if you have good content that really resonates with the right kind of people and people are 
engaging, pinning it in this case to a board uh, and really interacting and people are repinning it. So that means they're making like mood boards and someone else, a friend sees it and pins that pin then again on their board. That is engagement and Pinterest sees that and will suggest your pins to similar people. So they will look and see is it their engagement so that you need your images to be interesting, inspiring and curated. And that connection side of things, you know, are people connecting with your um, content? It's That's probably the downside of Pinterest, I find. It's not so much a community thing. There's not really that conversation uh, part of it. People can say what they like of a pin and not of a pin. So underneath the post, they can uh, share. But it's far less um, active, say, for example, on an Instagram or Facebook, which is a nice side as well, because you don't have all that chatter around something. Uh, it's very, it's usually very uh, neat and tidy <laughs> and very positive. So that's the other side to it. But it's a less of a platform where there's connection and Pinterest looks for conversion. Also with ads, what ads are working well, what people are uh, connecting and or, you know where are people clicking so those it's the same across all the board with all the social platforms it's all controlled by a uh, algorithm so that's just good for you to know remind uh, us in the live sessions every week that it is a free platform there are you know other marketing objectives and business objectives from the instagram facebook and pinterest makers you know all the social channels they have their agendas. And if you know that, then you can use that to your advantage. So social uh, um, in Pinterest has a pin. You can uh, make pins, which will look a little bit uh, in detail. There are boards that you can use. You can repin pins. The videos are very popular, ads are possible, and uh, trends. So there's a whole, um, Pinterest is continually looking for trends based on the algorithms, and then they suggest different trends. And the creativity, making things, how to do things, that's a really is a trend of this time. And that's why the art and uh, creativity really flows in that. Whether you're giving workshops, you are making uh, you know, original pieces, you're doing prints, reproductions, um, product-based uh, business. These are all you know, in the creative uh, side of things. So different potential. If you are going to uh, venture into the Pinterest platform as Facebook and Instagram, it's good to open a business account because it's just, you know, most of you said that you have a personal account, but that business account just gives you far more the analytics. As you say, you can run ads, you can see who's interacting with your content, you have a breakdown of your audience. And I think Pinterest is a wonderful way to do surveying because you can see, you know, exactly who is interacting with your content who you know what boards are, are people featuring you so you can get an idea of their demographics is it men or women is it you know what are the other interests what kind of lifestyle do they have so you get by looking at the person that's pinned one of your pins on their board you can get an idea of what people are uh, appealed and attracted to your art that's a good survey tool as well to see so create a business account that really makes uh, uh, sense if you're going to, you know, you're running your art business and uh, just gives you a lot of uh, extras. And you can find that uh, the little button, whether, you know, you have the personal account, you can change it to a business account, it doesn't cost anything extra, you just need to fill in some details um, to get that sorted. As of any strategy, any, you know, building a business, what is your objective? So maybe you're getting excited, you want to uh, use uh, Pinterest as a business um, strategy. What is your objective? Because the clearer you are about what your goal is to use this uh, social media channel, as because it's so specific with uh, Pinterest, um, you can get really clear about how you're going to go about it, how you're going to structure your boards, how you're going to, what pins are going to be using, and what call to action are you going to be adding. So is it, you can use it specifically to grow your email list or you can get increased traffic onto your website. It's a wonderful tool to get people onto your website. So if you have new content, I'll break it down a little further in the session. You can add, make a pin, and the source of the pin always stays uh, pure. 
that's what I love about Pinterest. So if you add a destination, so you add a URL, that will stay. It doesn't get uh, all blended. You know, if people are repinning and maybe are using that content again and again. It always goes back to the source. So you can add your URL destination to a pin that takes people right off that social channel. It's the only channel that really is so welcoming to get people off that channel and onto your own content. So if you use it very strategically, it's like, okay, I want to build my um, email list. I want to build, uh, get people onto my website because I have something to offer. Then you can use that very strategically. You can send people to a shop. So maybe you have an Etsy shop and you can add that Etsy URL or you have an external shop or you're on Saatchi Art or other platforms. You can send them directly to your content uh, at an external website. You can build up a portfolio so you can share with your, uh, if you have clients or you're working on, you know, some working in, want to enlarge your client base and say, I have a portfolio, please go to my Pinterest and then have a beautifully curated feed of Pinterest with, you know, very strategic boards uh, so that people can get more and uh, to know a little bit more about you. And you can make an online gallery right there in Pinterest just by using the right um, imagery and the right wording, people can have a full experience of who you are as a person, but also about your art, and then send them right there to your website where you can continue the conversation. Collaborations is a very powerful tool because you can share boards. You can actually collaborate. So maybe you're working with a group of artists and you can all add content to a certain board so that you can add collaboration uh, collaborators. And you can promote events and workshops. So all in all, many advantages. So it's based on, so you must think of a Pinterest as one a big mood board, for example. Instead of cutting and pasting out of magazines and putting it on phone call, this is something that you can do digitally. And it gives you an opportunity to make boards in themes. If you, you know, it's advisable to get some structure around your boards. And then on the boards, there are pins. So just think of a pin that you used to you know, sort of pin a piece of uh, cut out, so a piece of paper, uh, inspiration that you found in the magazine. You're pinning that to a um, mood board, to a phone call, for example. That's what a pin is. That's the whole idea, to create inspiring mood boards. But you can structure them really specifically. So you'll find the little plus sign. This is uh, my um, uh, Pinterest account. Um, and then you can find that little plus sign and then it says that you want to create a board or you want to create a pin. If you're just starting out, you first need to create a board because you need to have some way to, to place those pins. Creating a board is good to do a brainstorm, to know, you know how you're going to structure it and you can change it along the way. But to have some kind of framework, especially if you're using this as your business and very strategically, what are going to be the titles of my boards? What is it that you can, how are you going to structure it? You can also feature other people's uh, pins and external websites. If you see something on another website, you can actually pin that onto your um, boards as well. So to set up some kind of logical system and then getting into the head of your art buyer. What is it that your art buyer wants to know? And uh, my advice is if you're just starting out, Create a board and you can keep it secret. Like it's you have that little option, keep my board secret until you have about six to ten pins on it, because then you can unsecret it, <laughs> make it public, and then you have content to share because it's it looks a little bit um, um sad just with one pin on a board because that's not going to get people excited. So if you have a new board and you want to come out with a new board, make sure there's some interesting content on it, and then you can un. Uh, make it uh, public because you once it's public you can't make it private again you can't uh, make a secret so really think about it you can work you know offline first and then structure your boards and then you know even make an announcement on your instagram on your facebook i have a new board have a look uh, on your website i have a new board in your newsletter i have a new board please go this is my latest inspiration it was my trip to blah 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 it was my inspiration this so that you or telling people about your new board and that they should follow along and uh, so get them over there and then have a look at other artists i'll be sharing some of the artists that are using in, uh, uh, pinterest effectively and look and see what boards they're using what titles are they using because it's all keywords 
And this is the beauty of Pinterest. Pinterest is actually a visual search engine. So it may look like a place that you're collecting all kinds of uh, beautiful content and being inspired, but actually it's like a Google, but then visual, because it's also Google um, uh, indexed by Google. All these pins, all that information, all your descriptions. So it's you can find it in the search engine. And that is amazing. We talked about that in a few sessions ago, you know, how to get people onto your website, also SEO. This is a powerful SEO uh, generator to get people, uh, if people are searching on Google, they might just might just come across a pin from your, from your uh, board and then your URL is right there. They can uh, click right onto your website. So create a board, find uh, a, a interesting keyword, uh, a powerful uh, title, and then you can start adding content to it. This is what it looks like if you want to create a pin. I know some of you are active, active on Pinterest, but for the people you know out there that it's new, uh, there are two sides to a pin. You have the image side and you have the content, the word side. And keywords all across in the title, in the description, important, because that's what the search engines will be reading are the words. So finding what words, Best describe what you're doing, how you want to be found, or how people are going to be searching for you. You have 100 characters for your title, 500 characters for your description, so use them very intentionally, and then you can add a destination link. So reverse engineer and say, okay, where do I want people to go? Make sure you have content on your website, or maybe you have a new blog, you know, you're writing, so you have the content sitting somewhere in your WordPress site or on uh, your platforms. And then you take people to that link. Uh, you put the link uh, with a short description and an image that's interesting. And then you take people to your blog. So it's just another platform besides Google that people can see, visually see an image of your work or you know, an overlay text to get people to that new blog. And then you can schedule or you can publish immediately. And uh, you can even add hashtags to your description. So that's another filter option. So possibilities for you to uh, create amazing content on Pinterest. And the power is in the source. And that really is the beauty, as I already said, the source stays pure. So your URL will stay pure. So it has a far longer shelf life than Instagram than Facebook, because you know, that's quite instant. Everything is uh, uh, in the moment. And very rarely do people go back and uh, look at content or um, will be sharing as things move very fast in the social media world. But Pinterest generally has a far longer shelf life. I have people still coming onto my website from pins that I pinned a year, a year and a half ago. So it has so much more longevity. So if it's worth spending time making nice, beautiful pins, and it's there, you know, it's, it's people are looking and especially it takes a little bit more time to get traction on a Pinterest, uh, two or three months. Uh, you know, if you do it regularly, then people will start uh, uh, pinning uh, your uh, content to their boards or repinning or sharing. And uh, then you can start getting traction that way, which and then it will stay there for uh, for months to come and you can get um, that attention for your art or maybe you're giving a series of workshops or just creating your expert status, whatever your goal is for being there. And then adding those images, super important and words. So there's two sides of um, a good pin. So remember it's a visual platform, create that compelling image, add your branding elements so that it's recognizable for people and that your photography is clear and crisp. So you don't want murky images or too dark. Have a look at the Pinterest feed and you'll see what are the pins that are, are jumping at you. Usually there are the crispy images, videos with interesting overlays or type text that creates, um, that catches your eye. So that's there a given. You can have a look and see what works. And it's Google searchable. So that's such a perk. All that content is a searchable uh, search engine friendly. So good for you just to think of, you know, when you may thinking of using Pinterest and laying out your boards, what words 
will people uh, be looking, typing in when they're looking for you. So do a brainstorm, write down, you know, if you have certain genre, certain type of art, very specific, more specific, you can get the better. Because you can add, you know, board artist, but there are millions and millions of artists. Can you make it more specific? So really honing down and making it um, um, super focused, that really helps. And you can add those keywords to your titles and add them to your descriptions and to your overlays that people can start recognizing and seeing. Um, and this we already discussed when we looked at SEO for your website. Do a Google search. Look at the search and see how many people are searching for certain words and try and break it down so that it's not too broad, so that people will, you know, you'll be able to, won't be that tiny fish in that big pond. You want to catch people's attention. So the more specific you can get, the better with your keywords. Just as break it down for um, building your email list. I'm just going to check in the comments. I will be answering questions at the end of the session. So uh, hang in there. Um, I know a lot of you wanting to build your email list. You have started uh, creating content and you're communicating um, on a regular basis. This is what you could do as an artist. Find out what is your audience need. And that just takes getting into the right mindset too because very often you think well you know so yeah i'm making art and uh, you know i want people just to buy my art but get into the thought and the, into the uh, space of your potential art buyers what questions do they have why especially when it comes to pinterest why are they there if they are starting new projects or they you know are at a certain season in their life why are they there and how can that um what can that mean for you and what can you offer them? What advice role, what kind of experts uh, status can you give? How, how can you share your content so that they understand what you're doing? And then you reverse engineer. So then you create content uh, on your website. So for example, a blog post, or maybe you have a new series of paintings in your shop or in your Etsy shop or somewhere where your content is uh, and it's, it's new. And so then you create a board with a keyword that is associated with that topic and you create a series of pins and you add the URL, the destination now of where you want people to go and then definitely add a call to action because if you just say, you know, uh, you just share your information and not adding that call to action, that's such a pity. And I think the call to action that is something that you're appealing to people to take action. You say, please go to my website or visit my new collection in my shop. It's now gone live. That you're appealing to someone to take action. And people need reminders. They won't do it by themselves. So in your description, save some of those characters for a call to action. And by putting their mouse on that uh, pin, they'll go directly to that um, destination. So this is something that you could use to build your email list. And you can make pins of testimonials of people that have bought uh, your art. Maybe they have a photo of your art on their wall and they're you know, standing in front of it with a short overlay of, uh, you know, when I opened the package, I was blown away. Or uh, everyone that comes into my house uh, can't believe it. Just find an interesting sort of overlay on a pin. And you can do that in a type text, so it's more video. Uh, and then and make a pin from that. And then you can take them from that short little testimonial, take them to your website so that you can continue these conversations there. Maybe have a special place on your website just for testimonials so that you can link the content from the Pinterest platform to your website. Competitions, people love competitions. A challenge, a quiz. Maybe with, with, you know, your art genre. Okay, do you recognize this artist? Do you recognize that artist? And you have some kind of quiz. You take them from an interesting pin and then you take them to a platform, your, a, a page on your website where you can continue that quiz or you're sending them an email uh, with the quiz questions. So is that interaction? Remember, it's a visual search engine and you take them to a platform where the conversation 
content or you offer them that content. A sneak peek, a checklist, a free download, maybe you have a thumbnail and some wallpaper for your phone, background of your phone uh, that people can download. Make a pin, send them to that uh, landing page. This is an example of a, um, a strategy and something for you to think about what is that your audience needs. Maybe you have prints of uh, art and uh, where do you buy downloadable vintage art? Maybe you have vintage art or where do you buy downloadable um, animal art or flower art? Maybe you are a floralist, like I know that's Elizabeth, you make lots of beautiful uh, florals, um, flowers. Then you can make a pin where can you buy download, downloadable floral art or where can you buy original floral art? And you can send them to, uh, you make a lovely uh, pin with a keyword description, with a clear content or clear image, and it is a click uh, destination URL to your website where you have a blog explaining, you know, what you, can you think about when you're buying, the, buying downloadable art? What do people have to consider or when they're buying a reproduction? What's the difference between a reproduction and an original? That's already something you know it, but your art audience doesn't. And that's just like a doorway to start conversations. And then there's that pop-up, that uh, opt-in form that people can then uh, join your email list. So get into the mind of your art audience, not an other artist. No, this is your art audience. They know nothing about art. They just love, you know, certain genre or maybe colors or a certain um, palette form or certain uh, topic. Uh, what questions are they asking? Maybe they're wanting to have a gallery in on their stairway. Or how do they hang up art? Or how can you do good lighting for art, about framing art. How can you uh, collect art? These are all the how-tos that uh, are, you know, to see a lot of how-tos on uh, Pinterest. What how-tos are your art audience asking? And can you create a pin that's connected to a blog that then uh, people join your email list so that they can stay informed and make it visually interesting and to use those keywords in your descriptions? So this is an artist who does uh, uh, very well with her watercolors and uh, she does paintings of a special event and especially weddings. So uh, on Pinterest, she gets lots of traction. Uh, people are looking for a special wedding gift or a special wedding experience, for example. And people send a photo of the day, even in, you know, in the morning when the photo session is there, send that digitally and by the end of the day they have their watercolor as a gift and it's sent framed or with a mat or um, the original on a piece of uh, hand uh, pressed paper. So this is a strategy that uh, that she's using. Lots of pins on uh, Pinterest, interesting boards with clicks to uh, her website and it's in the you know new season starting a new project so <laughs> you're getting married then uh, this is where people are going to go to Pinterest. They're not going to find it on Instagram or Facebook, they're going to go to Pinterest because they want to know how can I, you know, what's an interesting gift that I can give my brother-in-law who's getting married or an interesting gift we can do with a group of friends. How can art play a part in ceremony of the bouquet or of the um, couple or, you know, of the atmosphere? And then you can make a board. This is uh, uh, Taylor. She's a US-based artist. And uh, she has one of her boards is uh, art inspiration and adding her art that's in mock-ups, but also her art that's been sold, but also other art that's uh, part of her inspiration. And all these uh, um, pins are pinnable to different locations. So some of them go to her Etsy shop, some of them go to her website, some of them go to a blog, but she's all put it into one board. And you can see it's curated, you know, there's one atmosphere throughout the whole uh, board so that it's uh, interesting and inspiring for people to look at. So that's something for you guys also to consider, you know, what kind of boards can you make and then we, what destinations you're going to take people. And there's an opportunity, you've seen that before, when there are, when there's content on your website, you have an image and you can put some coding on your Wix website or your uh, WordPress website that that 
uh, Pinterest uh, button appears. And that means that people can go directly. This is uh, my podcast uh, page. And then as people scroll over to their mouse, the, it's pinnable so that they go from the website, they click on that image, and they can save it on their board. So maybe they have a board, they found the subject inspiring, and then they post it on their board, which their friends then get to see because they have people following them. So that's how it sort of builds out. Another artist that uh, is using Pinterest very effectively, artist friend of mine, Malcolm Dewey from uh, South Africa, and uh, this has Pinterest has totally changed his business. He says, you know, with all the social media channels, this is where he gets his most business uh, across the board. So it's something that he uses very intentionally. So please go and have a look at his uh, Pinterest accounts because he sells his art through the Pinterest boards, but also is building um, his education side of his business because he gives workshops. So a lot of online courses on uh, how to uh, paint impressionistic. And so it's also an inspiration um, place where people can be, can be inspired. So, you know, he has boards about different masters. So it doesn't all have to be your content. You can also share content from other artists. So maybe you can create a board just within your genre, people that have similar kind of art styles. And uh, you can either download or, you know, pin from another website. Just make sure, you know, there is a destination on every pin that you are sharing, uh, repinning. So that you don't want people to go too much all over the place, preferably interact with your content. But have a look and see at the different titles. For example, he has a board all about oil painting Karoo moments. Karoo is a beautiful place uh, in South Africa. So he's made specific um, uh, series. And then you go from that pin, you can go to his website where there's the pricing, where how, you know, how it's shipped, and uh, it's a direct uh, link. And then, as you see at the bottom of this uh, uh, pin, there's more like this. And that's also fun about Pinterest. They do suggest, and especially if you're getting a lot of traction on your pins, you come up in the search and they suggest your work to other people. So they're just you know, a larger group that's being able to interact with your art. Just some handy apps. Uh, Hootsuite and uh, Tailwind is a scheduler. Handy that you can schedule your pins uh, far in advance. I used to do it once a month. I'd have all my pins ready. And then once a month, I'd schedule them all in for the month. And I didn't have to think about it. And that's the fun thing is it's not so much you have to have, you know, the likes and the comments. And really, uh, it's low maintenance. It's out there. You know, sometimes when I get a, a request for a coaching session or a request for uh, one of my courses, and then I ask, how did you find me? Oh, no, it was Pinterest because I saw a video because I saw a pin. And that's, I pinned that months ago. I'd totally forgotten about it. But it was still alive and working. And then, you know, people find their way to you. So it's something that it's a sort of longer trajectory. And creating that wonderful content is important. So using Canva or Photoshop or Spark, that's what I use. It's within the Adobe Creative Cloud. Um, you can create really lovely pins and then, Think through your branding so that, you know, what kind of font you're going to be using, what kind of layout. Definitely uh, look at the orientation that you use the most real estate. That means the longer your pin are, especially because people are using the mobile uh, function, uh, you want to have use as much of that screen as possible. So if you're going into the horizontal orientation, which is possible, but you'll have a far smaller pin. So my advice is get the most out of your um screen and use the vertical orientation so make a nice vertical orientation and with canva you can really say okay this is for pinterest so they'll give you the right resolution and uh, the layout and then you can uh, add your branding so good photography you know good text uh, video if that's possible and use that google analytics if you've got the business pinterest you'll have a business uh, you'll have the analytics there the demographics, are they men and women interacting with your art? What are the ages? What countries are they from? Um, you know, what are their interests? You can really get an idea of people that are engaging with your art. And that helps you then again to, uh, with, when you're using ads or when you, you know, writing, then you have an idea, okay, who's following me? And Google Analyst, Analytics too, you can specifically go to the source who has gone from 
Pinterest to your website and you can see and break that down again. We will in the future uh, focus a little bit more on analytics so that you can understand the numbers because they speak volumes and really will help you. So create curated content, use overlays, so text over your images, video is really powerful and uh, the correct format. And then idea pins, that's the sort of the story version of for Pinterest um, Instagram story. It's where you have like a slideshow. So those are called idea pins and you can set up, you know, show your process. So it looks a little bit more like a video. I'm really curious, guys, if there are any questions about this. I know I've been rattling on and uh, there's lots to say. Um, and I do realize that, uh, you know, many of you are just using uh, Pinterest privately. But maybe this is something that you want to consider to use for your business, for your art business. I'd love to know if anyone has thoughts about this, ideas about this, um, whether you are now considering using Pinterest, any questions about Pinterest that maybe I could answer or maybe the group can answer, then I'd love to hear from you. Hello, Maria. <laughs> Good to see you in the group. Always lovely to have you here. But any questions, guys, or observations or you know, little remarks that you have, um, I'd love to hear from you. Um, and, you know, if you have your uh, Pinterest URL, then you can please uh, add it to the, you know, if you're active uh, as an artist, then you can also add it to the comments. So anyone uh, been thinking about using it? So Sissa says, yeah, many thoughts about uh, using Pinterest and need to get started. Yeah, definitely an added uh, platform, uh, Sissa. Um, I know it made a huge difference for me. And as I said, it has a longer shelf life. So thank, you know, people are very um, grateful and thankful for your content because it stays in there so much longer. So it's really worth the time and the effort. So uh, let me know how that works out for you. And uh, and Jan says, yeah, it sounds so useful. Look into it. And uh, Elizabeth says, yeah, it's all new to me, but definitely consider using it. But I can't, for the life of me, figure out how it works. Elizabeth, you know, I know for just for the last few weeks uh, with Facebook and Instagram, you know, this is another platform. Just start at the beginning. You know, you're doing wonderful things on Instagram, but I've been seeing uh, you doing and we don't have to do all things at once. It can be something that can be in the future. And uh, there are resources out there and uh, easy to follow. I know that's what I love about Printers too. They have great resources, videos, and uh, uh, help desk step by step, very uh, intuitively that you can follow. So don't let the technology overwhelm you, <laughs> uh, but give it some thought. You know, if, this, if you're ready and it's the next step for you. And you're thinking, I just need more traction to my website. So maybe your website is up and running and thinking, why are there not uh, that many people visiting? I'm not finding, you know, the sales from my website. Then instead of, you know, using Google ads, you can try the Pinterest strategy. So that you can build your email list and get people onto your website. If you have any questions, you know, about maybe about other social media platforms, uh, that we haven't covered. I know, you know, there's LinkedIn, Snapchat, there's uh, Clubhouse, there's a lot uh, out there, uh, all things that we've already spoken about. Or if you have questions specifically for the session, I know there were some questions about, uh, for example, Instagram, how can you build an audience with the right kind of people so you're not just having artists follow you? That's a question, for example, I'm going to be holding in, in next week's session. So if you guys have any questions, then uh, please look out for that post and then you can. Uh, ask your questions and uh, thank you guys for uh, for joining me for this uh, session and uh, wish you a wonderful day uh, whatever you're doing and uh, next week we'll be here same time same place if you're watching the replay <laughs> have a wonderful week too and uh, see you in the community thanks guys <laughs>